Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now recently I was able to pick up this lot of vintage 12 inch Kenner Star Wars figures and as you can see they're all missing pretty much everything but that's what I like because that's a good challenge and today we're going to take a look at how we can restore uh, the Princess Leia figure in the middle because that's the one that's probably the easiest to get back looking good. So let's get started on this restoration. Now this layer figure is actually not in too bad a condition. I've given her a bit of a wash just in some hot soapy water and I've also washed the hair as well because it was a little bit dirty. But as you can see that's not looking too bad. Generally if you just wash the hair in soapy water and let it dry you can then pass a comb through it and it will come out looking fairly reasonable. And that's really all I did to this figure so far. Again I've given the body a wash. There are a few little marks on it which I've sort of used a bit of lighter fluid to clean. But overall it's actually in quite nice condition. The knee joints still work as well. You can see that you can pose the knees. That's always a good sign. So this was a good sort of starting point for a figure. Now obviously she has no clothes and now I've done a little bit of trading with uh, Steve Noden who just happened to have the outfit which you can see here. Now this needs a little bit of work as well. So this is the first thing we're going to do because when you're restoring a vintage layer doll you do the hair last. The hair looks like it's the most important thing uh, but actually it's the last thing you do because you want to get all of the outfit in place first. Uh, and then we can worry about getting that sort of set up because the chances of sort of knocking the buns whilst you're working on something else makes it sort of worthwhile just leaving till the end so you can get it all looking nice and then worry about that in the last instance. So the first thing we're going to do is fix this outfit. Now it looks overall pretty good. Again I've given this a bit of a wash just to sort of get any marks off it. There's a few little marks left but overall it's not too bad. And it has similar problems to uh, what you see on Action Man clothing. It's just that seams have come undone. So you can see here there is a seam that's come undone on the shoulder and part of the sort of back hood has come out so that needs sewing in place. It's also missing one of the press studs. The uh, back of the outfit, if I just move the hood out of the way, clips together with two press studs so there should be one there and then one at the top and you can see that one side of that press stud is missing so we'll replace that as well. So let's get some sewing done, we'll get this outfit made and then we can move on to sorting out the other bits because she's missing a belt that should go around her waist. She also needs to have a pair of socks and shoes and I have uh, replacements for those and I can show you what they look like. But first up, let's get the sewing done. I've turned the dress inside out and you can see clearly now what's happened. It's just the seam on the shoulder has come undone and the seam sort of goes through the little hood part as well. So all I've got to do is I've just sort of lined this up fairly neatly. I just need to re-sew that uh, little line there. So I have some cotton here. This is from Mrs. Toy Poloi's uh, sewing pot and I also have a needle here with a bit of cotton in it and I'm just going to carefully sew along the uh, little seam there and sew everything back in place. So that when we turn this back inside out uh, the little hood bit should be held back in place and the shoulder should be back together. So just a nice slow bit of sewing here and I think everything will look pretty nice. After a simple bit of uh, sewing there you can see that uh, the, the hood is now reattached to the shoulder and it all looks pretty neat again. So it's just a seam that had come undone. Now the next bit we need to do is on this back where the press stud is missing. Now you can pick up these uh, fairly cheaply. Uh, you can see these are seven millimeter size ones and they match the size of the original little press stud. And all we need is the uh, male side of this stud. Now these are actually round compared to the original ones which are square but they still work just the same. So you can see that I can push in the male side and it clips in place. So I've just got to sew that back on, oops if I could just unhook that, uh, to where it should be on the inside of this collar piece and then when we put this back on the layer doll it will all clip in place. I've just got to sew this one sort of simply onto the back there and uh, it will work just as well as it did originally. So let's get this one sewed in place. So 
So here we have the press start in place and you can see that if I push these two sides together it now clips as it would have done originally. So we can get this dress back on the layer doll and start working on some of the other areas. She should come with a little belt which is a sort of plastic belt that wraps around the waist and pulls the dress all sort of neatly in around her sort of waistline uh, and this is always missing and I've yet to find one uh, to actually buy I can't even find reproduction ones so I thought I would make my own and the original plastic one I didn't never particularly like the look of so I'm going to make something slightly different today now a quick look on eBay and I was able to buy some ribbon now this is quite sort of 70s style ribbon it's uh, five millimeters across and this has an iridescent sparkly sort of edge and I thought this would be ideal to make a belt to go Around there because it does look sort of quite 70s. So I picked this up from a place called the Ribbon Hut. This is off eBay. It was very cheap. I think I've got uh, two meters here, maybe slightly more, uh, and I only need a tiny amount of it. So I'm just going to uh, cut off a short length so that we've got something to work with. And we can use this to make the belt. And again, I'm going to use uh, press studs because that seems the easiest way to do this. I'm just going to fold over part of uh, one end of the ribbon like so and I've got some smaller press studs here these ones are six millimeter press studs this ribbon is actually five millimeters I just don't happen to have any five millimeter press studs in my sort of uh, tools box here but the six millimeter ones should do so I'm going to just sew on the two parts of uh, these press studs onto the ends of this and we'll make a little belt now I'm going to start by just sewing one on then we can hold this around the figure and work out how long it needs to be uh, I probably could measure it but it's easy enough just to do as I go along so let's get this uh, sewn in place I'm just going to I've got a knot on the end of my cotton here it's the same cotton I was using to uh, sew the other parts of Leia's dress and I can just sort of work my way around and we'll sew this little press start on and we'll make our own custom belt so there's one of the ends sewn on it's not particularly neat but it doesn't actually have to be because it's all going to be hidden behind the back of the layer figure I'm just going to raise her arms up and we can put this around her waist and work out how long it needs to be because you want it sort of quite tight so it holds everything in place so I would say it's going to be about that long and we want a little bit extra because I'm just going to fold over the end so that it's got a nice neat finish so it's going to be about that long so again I can just fold that over and then we can see which way around that goes so it's going to look like that so again we get the other piece of the press stud which is here and I can just sew that in place there and trim everything up and then the belt should be ready and we can put it onto the figure Let's get that sewn in place. That's that bit of sewing done. Just trim off the bits of cotton and I can also trim down this ribbon because I left it quite long just so it's easy to work with. So just trim that off like so. And there we have one belt that should, if I got everything round the right way, wrap round. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's put that on the figure. And there it is on the figure. As you can see, that actually looks quite nice. I do like the iridescent edge to that. It's very 70s looking. And if we turn it around, you can see there's the uh, press studs on the back, sort of hidden in the folds of the fabric. And actually, if you have the collar down, you cannot see the back of that. So that is a nice alternative to the sort of plastic one. Obviously, in time, if I find one, I'll uh, swap it out. But I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen uh, the original belt sort of loose for sale anywhere. I don't think anyone makes a reproduction. Um, but if they do, let me know because I'll, uh, I'll certainly swap that out in the future. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. With the socks and shoes I'm going to rely on shop bought items because it seems the easiest way. I could make some socks and I've shown you how to make socks before for a six million dollar man doll but uh, with this layer doll it's just an easier way of getting them is to just buy them off the shelf. Now if you search on eBay or other sites for one six scale costumes and outfits you can find quite a lot of things that will fit these dolls and I picked up these socks. These are one six scale socks or uh, stockings I think they call them sort of schoolgirl socks. Uh, I picked these up of eBay 
way these came from China they take a little while to get here but as you can see they are quite nicely made socks and these cost I think it was about £1.50 including shipping so uh, they're a very good deal it just takes quite a few weeks for them to arrive so we can use those socks on the layer doll I think they will look quite nicely and we can do the same with the shoes I picked up some shoes now this is a pack of a few different types of shoes and again this came from China this is a sort of one six scale size uh, type of shoe but actually if you just search on eBay for Barbie's Ken shoes because uh, it turns out that Leia's feet are the same size as Ken's feet. Uh, you can find this pack of uh, little shoes. And if we open this up, let's see if I can find a way to open this. A bit at the bottom there. In this bag, we have a few pairs of shoes. We've got some boots. We don't need those ones. We've got some little black shoes, which we don't need. But these are the ones we are going to use. And these are little white trainers. And they just happen to fit perfectly on Leia's feet so let's squeeze those on they have a little split on the back of them so you have to sort of open that up and push them around the feet they are a little bit on the tight side but uh, with some persuasion you can get these on so let's just do that so I say a bit of persuasion you see, and squeeze there we go Leia's foot in the shoe so we're going to put these socks on and then we're going to put these shoes on and that should make her look pretty reasonable so let's get the socks and shoes on this doll now there is a slight trick to getting these socks to look nice and flat like this and that is to actually not put them on fully if you put them on fully you end up with little wrinkles around the ankle so what you do is if you just leave the sort of toe section a bit long and on the underside of the foot you can then sort of fold this down and we'll put the shoe on and that will just be under the foot and that way you get a nice finish to them obviously the original socks wouldn't have uh, had this feature uh, this is just because these socks are not quite perfectly the right size for these they're sort of a very generalized uh, sock designed to fit on multiple figures but as you see if I uh, fold that under and push the shoe on that uh, hides the little sort of wrinkles and the feet cover up everything else and you end up with a sock that fits really nicely so uh, they're perfectly good for doing a sort of recreation like this and as you can see the shoes although they are trainers by the time you've got the uh, skirt and dresses folded down you can't see that you possibly could file off or maybe sort of sand down the details of the trainers but uh, in this instance I'm not going to because I think it will look just fine uh, like that now we come to the trickiest part of this restoration and that is doing the hair and it's really only tricky because I don't deal with uh, doll's hair that often so for me this is quite a challenge but it can be done and it's uh, something that once it's done you never need to do it again so let's just get on with this now when I wash this doll I washed the hair just using some uh, sort of hot soapy water and while it was still sort of wet I used a simple comb like this just to comb out the hair and you very carefully sort of comb along and comb out any knots that there are at the ends it's a bit of a slow process but it's certainly worth doing it and I managed to get the hair looking sort of as neat as it could fairly easily it took about 10 or 15 minutes just to comb this out and now you can see that I can comb this hair fairly reasonably with this uh, brush considering I've uh, been uh, sort of manhandling this doll and moving it around to film it does brush out quite nicely so while the hair was damp I put a center parting in so that I could easily sort of grasp two parts of the hair and make two ponytails because obviously that is what we need to do if I turn this doll over you can see that I've got the parting all the way down the back now again off eBay I picked up some braiding elastic bands so these are the sort of elastic bands that you use uh, for braiding hair and you can buy thousands of them you can see I just put a pile here very cheaply I think uh, there's a thousand in this bag and they cost about a pound and really you're only going to need about 10 they do snap sort of occasionally they've got a fair amount of elasticity to them but you really only need sort of 10 or 15 to get this whole process done so with the hair parted in two like this we just need to make a ponytail either side so I've got one of the little braiding elastic bands on here and I'm going to sort of pull the hair around till I get a nice clump of it now this is easier to do not on a flat surface it's actually easier to do if you have the doll sort of standing up but I will persevere today so that I can do it all on camera there you go just do it around one more time and we'll make one bunch now this bunch actually needs to be a little bit further forwards you want the the hair sort of bunch to be just above each ear because uh, that's where the space bun uh, needs to be created now you can see we have little sort of 
bits of hair sticking out and if you get that then just sort of rearrange it until uh, you get rid of them pull the hair around and it should flatten out a bit or if worst case is take that off and redo it now I'm going to do another ponytail on this side but I'll do that off camera because it is a lot easier to do now for the space buns you're going to need some bottle tops this is a bit of a blue peter fix uh, but it does work really well so i've been collecting up bottle tops this is a bottle top from a lemonade bottle and this is uh, three centimeters across if i put it onto my cutting mat you'll see here it's exactly three centimeters across and we can look at the sort of depth of it and it's about one centimeter in depth and these seem a very good size uh, to uh, make these buns again and what you're going to need to do is uh, drill a hole right in the middle of it uh, i've done a few of these already so you drill a hole in the middle and then spray it black because obviously if it's bright yellow like this it stands out and black seems to be a color that will hide inside this brown hair sometimes you're lucky and these bottle tops do come in black but for me I've only been able to find them in sort of multiple bright colors and spraying them black means that I've ended up with some that look like this so you can see here are some with holes in the side on the back these were gold ones I think I've got a couple more here and these are yellow ones and this is what we're going to use to make the space buttons so now comes the tricky part because we need to thread this amount of hair through the hole that's been drilled in here and it's again one of those sort of trickiest jobs I'm sure if you've done doll hair a lot it's easy but for me I use a screwdriver or something like that and just sort of poke the hair through I've not found a sort of easy way of doing this uh, but I'm sure there is even maybe a bit of string might work but I just push a screwdriver through and then pull the hair through the hole that I've cut as you can see it's a bit of a slow process but it is possible and in the end you'll end up with all the hair through the hole it just takes sort of a few minutes to do so that's the first one on as you can see that fits on quite nicely I'm actually going to put the other bottle cap on this side before we start constructing the buns just because it's a little bit of a fiddly job and you're liable to knock the other side if you're doing it so as you can see once these are on they hold on uh, pretty firmly so I'll get this other one on and then we can start shaping the buns and shaping the hair around to make uh, layer space buns now that I've got the hair through on both sides we can sort of tidy it up a little bit again I'm just going to use a comb here and I'm going to carefully sort of brush the hair out so that it's sort of more in a rounded shape so the ponytail sort of end has been pulled out and open so it looks like it's starting to form uh, the sort of shape of the bun as you can see because the hair has been sort of brushed a few times it's easy enough to uh, pass this comb through it and it starts to look a little bit like a space bun you can see that it's starting to form the correct shape I'll do that on the other side I've already done this one a little bit beforehand so we can just start brushing that out and that is starting to form what we want now the next trick is to put more uh, of these braiding bands over this and sort of to pull the hair in behind the inner part of the cap now for that I'm actually going to make another little tool which will really help doing this and for that you will need one more bottle top so I have one here I'm going to take a pair of plastic nippers and I'm going to cut along the edge sort of in little bits about every sort of centimeter I'm going to cut like so so it sort of opens out a bit more and this is the sort of space bun maker I think without this it becomes really hard work so now that I've cut that out I can open up all of these pieces and you'll see that this now sort of slides over the top of another cap and that is what we want because we're going to use this to drop the elastic bands on now now I've got a, a braiding band here I'm going to double this up just so it's a little bit stronger because you want the elastic to sort of really ping everything all the hair in place I'm going to put this onto this space bun maker lid that I've created make sure it's all in the right place and then we can use this to sort of place over the, the lid un that's under the hair sort of push it down in place and then use that to guide the elastic band onto the lid underneath as you can see like that and then we can start to roll this elastic band so it goes right to the edge of the lid a bit of fiddling and it will start to pull in place behind you can see if I sort of gently tease this it's starting to pull the hair in behind the lid it's pretty hard to explain what you're doing but there you go the elastic band has now gone behind that lid and is pulling all of the hair in and starting to form the shape of the bun 
Now you're going to need a screwdriver or something so you can start to gently push this in, push the hair in. But the elastic band, because it's under quite a lot of tension, starts to pull everything in. And you can see we're starting to get the shape of a bun. I'll do it a bit more around the back there. And we'll go all the way around. Now sometimes these don't look very neat to start with, but you can sort of generally sort of move the hairs about. And if you put more elastic bands in, it will tidy it up. So just don't worry too much on this first go. If it doesn't look perfect, we can tidy that up as we go along. So let me just do a little bit more fiddling and then we go on to the next stage. So again, I'm just pushing this hair behind and around as we go. So I don't think that's looking too bad. You can see there's a few straggly hairs, but that's actually not looking like a bad space bun there. So you can see we've got a few little straggly mist hairs there. I'm just going to get another braiding band and this time because we've got everything in place we should be able to just drop this on by hand. I'm going to rotate her head about. Hopefully catch a few more of these straggling hairs. Again this is not the easiest of things to do on camera. Do that. That's caught a few more. That's just starting to pull in. So you can see that's not looking too bad at all. So I might as well go and do the other side now and we'll get that bun made and then we can come around and tidy up any sort of missed pieces. So now it's time to do the other side. I'm going to hold the head and try not to mess up the one I've already made on the other side. I've already got the hair brushed out. I'm going to push this on and then roll the elastic band down onto the head and over the bottle top underneath. So you can see there. Start to roll that out. That's starting to go, so I get the screwdriver again. I can start pushing in these bits of hair. Try and centre up the buns as well because you want them to be even. So you can see that's not looking too bad. It's still got a few little stragglers on there. So again, I'll just get another elastic band and drop that over the top just so that we can start to tidy up some of these edges. Again, this is the fiddly fiddliest bit. So that's not looking too bad at the moment. I'll do a little bit more tidying up and show you the finished result. 
After a little bit more tinkering, I'm happy with how they look now. It's a sort of fine line between going too far and sort of messing them up, uh, but you can get them looking really nice. As you can see here, this is a, a pretty good effort. I think if I did them off camera, I'd probably get them looking a lot better. And if you want to, you can make the space buns even bigger. Obviously, I use the three centimeter bottle tops for the ones on the left, but if you use these four centimeter bottle tops, which come on sort of fancier lemonade bottles, you can make bigger buns. Now, I quite like these. This is a little bit more like the original ones were. The original ones were sort of a halfway house between these smaller and larger ones. Uh, it tends to make it look a little bit more like a TIE fighter and it sort of adds a sort of childish element to them. But uh, obviously the ones on the left are a bit more screen accurate. So really it's up to you whether you go for big space buns or small space buns. And here are the completed layer dolls. As you can see, she does look really nice. I'm pretty pleased with how my little belt came out. Obviously it's not quite as uh, the original one was, but I do like the little sort of iridescent glow that you get around the edge of it. And it does look quite sort of 1970s in its styling. And obviously these socks and trainers, although aren't original, they work really well. And from a distance, you can't see the sort of the uh, trainery parts of them. And as I say, if you really wanted to, you could probably sand that down and make them flatter. But really once these are on display here, no one's gonna notice that she she is wearing trainers. So I hope my video on restoring a vintage 12 inch uh, Kenner layer from Star Wars has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.